Yes. How about now? Oh, okay, this one, it, it has to be closer. How about now? Oh, yep, okay. All right, so thanks. Uh, uh, so I'm going to talk about group Gem in Triton. There's joint work with Ben and Jack uh, and a lot more other people. Uh, so I'll give you an overview of the talk uh, to summarize. So I want to communicate that group gem is a general mechanism for improving performance and utilization of uh, GPUs. It was initially introduced in Cutlass 2.8 uh, and has been adopted by many uh, people um, and use cases. And the purpose of this talk is uh, to introduce this pattern uh, to the Triton community uh, uh, and we have submitted a PR uh, with a tutorial. So you can use it uh, and for the performance potential. Uh, and, and a large number of people working on Cutlass and other parts of NVIDIA have contributed to the idea. So I'm very privileged to uh, present their work. OK, so here's some links to uh, people who adopted. So if you get the slides, so the links point you to uh, Git, GitLab or Git, GitHub repositories or archive papers. Uh, and there are four cases here uh, that. Uh, uh, OK, so let's motivate the problem. So let's say you want to run multiple gems. So in this example, we have four, three gems. Uh, and what I'm showing you here for each gem is the tiling decomposition of each gem. So I'm not showing all the elements. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on are the different tiles of the gem we have decomposed somehow. Uh, and we have, let's assume we have four SMs, uh, and then each SM can run at most two tiles, uh, just, just to illustrate the idea. So, so, so the single stream execution model uh, works as follows. We pick a gem, and we take all the tiles and try to run them, schedule them, on, on the different GPUs or SMs. So in this case, we have four tiles and they go uh, horizontally and each uh, SM is idle, right? Then we go to the next one uh, and then we distribute uh, those across. So you say 0, 1, 2, 3, go, and then we go 3, 4, 5, and the last two SMs, 2 and 3, are idle. They're not fully utilized. You could change the decomposition, but that's a different issue. But at some point, this we run into this problem of quantization. Um, and then we do the third one, and they also have this uh, issue. So, so we are running three gems separately uh, without full utilization. So, so if you were to see the time view, this is what it would look like, uh, is that uh, a lot of idle uh, SMs in the system. So what do we do? So we can basically group them differently, right? So what we did here is, we took the first gem, gem zero. Uh, we took the tiles and started assigning them to different SMs. So at the bottom, you see zero, one, two, three from the gem zero. Then we go to gem one and distribute it. So we filled all the all the SMs. Uh, then we go to the third problem, and then we basically put another one uh, on the timeline. So now, in this case, uh, we can do it in two steps without any idle. So here we have three steps uh, to run three gems. Uh, there are three steps distributed over four SMs. Here we have two steps in this example. This is a contrived example, but just to get you the idea, this is what will happen. In two steps, we will be able to finish it uh, under some assumptions. So that's kind of the basic idea. So what we have is we have a static scheduler uh, that given a particular decomposition of all the gems that you're going to group, uh, it'll assign uh, uh, in a particular way to reduce uh, idleness. Uh, and it works great uh, uh, for some cases where, uh, so anyway, so the advantages are you can saturate the GPUs uh, and can support different shapes, that is element sizes, M and K. Um, and you don't have to do multi-streaming uh, and you can do a single kernel launch uh, instead of separate kernel launches. 
Uh, so that's the advantage. And then uh, some of the alternatives to group jam you might be familiar with. So one is bash jam. Effectively, you take a jam and you add a bash dimension, uh, and then that way you have to transform your code manually to do things in a particular way. And then if you then the problem becomes large, and then you can keep the GPUs uh, and the SM saturated and uh, fully utilized. Or you could do multi-streaming using CUDA APIs, CUDA driver APIs, uh, and that essentially complicates your host logic. Uh, you have to do it all manually uh, for a particular thing. So that just another alternative. You can do horizontal fusion, which compilers do. So horizontal fusion typically works where, let's say you have two gems and they share the first operand, right? A times B and A times C. Uh, you can now put them into a single gem, and then you can concatenate the two and, and split the output. So you have to do some data movement, and you have to make sure that the layouts, the concatenated things are right so that the data movement is eliminated. So it complicates things, but people do that. Those are some alternatives. Um, and they're also pretty effective. So, so this is what we do in the Triton implementation. Uh, and so effectively, we implemented a device side static scheduler. And we have the number of SMs or virtual SMs as a parameter. Uh, and we fix it. Then what we do is we visit each of the gem problems one by one from left to right of some order. Uh, we have a decomposition already. We start assigning them to the different SM. And then once you're done, then we go to the next problem, and then we do the same thing again until we finish everything. So, so effectively, what will happen here would be that we take the first problem, and we are not fully done with all the SMs, and we continue with the next problem, and then we fill all the SMs, then we go back and start allocating uh, the styles again uh, statically. Right? So that's basically the idea. Uh, so, so here's an example of how the API uh, for the MATML looks like. So on the left is the standard MATML Triton kernel API. So we have A pointer, B pointer, and C pointer as usual. We have uh, M and K, the shapes. Uh, we also have the strides uh, of the different uh, tensors. And then we, that is LDA, LDB, and LDC. And we have the block size, which is the, uh, the tiling to use. So all we did here was we take all the A pointers and make them A of I, right? So essentially we have a group size. So this A group pointer becomes an array of tensors of length of group size. So this points to the operands uh, that you allocated. Uh, and then we do the same thing for the dimensions. So you have M of I, K of I, J of I, and N of I are the dimensions listed as passed as lists uh, and so on. And then we pass the group size and then we have a num number of SMs as a parameter. So you can, that's tunable. You can choose different values. And then we assume that in this particular API or, or sample, we're going to tile all the gems identically, right? That is M and K. Uh, the group size would be, the block size would be the same for all the gem problems. This is just to illustrate and simplify so that's basically what we did. And so here's the performance results. Uh, it's kind of a bit, I don't know if it's easy to read. Uh, so what we did was we, we chose a number of problems. So we say M equal to N equal to K. So we essentially worked on square uh, matrices. Uh, so when you say 128 times four, that means we have a group size of uh, M and K of 128, and replicated it four times. Right? Uh, and at the end, we have group size of, uh, let's see, 128, 256, 512, 124, so that's just one group. And then multiply that by uh, something like four, and then we replicate that group. So that's what we did. So you can see that uh, in the middle, uh, you get massive speed up on uh, 8,000. 8, and there are cases where we see some slowdown. Uh, so it can happen, and we basically searched for some auto-tune, uh, use a standard Triton auto-tuner uh, to search for the best. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have. Um, so, 
So the basic idea is that you can use this uh, in your workloads, uh, and it can be implemented already. Um, and we need uh, some, you know, more tuning here, and we need a better understanding. But this is another trick people can use. Uh, uh, and we already have a PR submitted uh, for a tutorial example, uh, which basically runs uh, the example that I showed you. Uh, you can run it, and you can modify it and adapt it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm, I can take a few questions. Uh, yeah. Hi, right, thanks. Um, how does the performance compare of this to uh, the Cutlass that uh, you were talking okay, about? Okay, so because you, you looked like you had this bell curve here, right? Yeah. So we didn't do that experiment because I think that would be we can ask the same question for any Triton example versus Cutlass. So we I don't think we've done that, <laughs> uh, but I think the point I'm trying to make is that uh, some of the features in Cutlass. You can already use in Triton. That is really what I like. The sure. Yeah. I just like, you know, maybe not imperative or um, direct compare mm -hmm. number wise, but like that that particular shape there, where certain sizes were. Yeah. So so beneficial, I think what, yeah, right? Right. So th so there's some application that we found uh, where there we have a large number of small gems that uh, that you need to run. Or there are many applications, deep learning, some of them, and then simulation, all kinds of stuff. Where, where you need to do that, and running the standard schedule uh, is is not very good. Yeah. Thanks for the great talk. Um, so, I mean, in terms of the cost, do you think like I mean, um, it makes sense to construct group? Pointers. I mean, I think like I mean, you need to create a tensor and then you need to assign like pointer to all the. I think the array of ten. I think the array. I mean. Yeah. So so good good question. So I think so. I mean, I've shown you the most general formulation of the group gem. So there are cases where, for example, if you know that all sizes and the shapes are the same, but you have multiple instances, then you don't have to pass array of group uh, of shapes. For example, let's M and K could be the same. Could be shared for all the gems, so you could do that and make your kernel overhead um, minimal, right? Uh, so, so we've done that at least internally in some applications. So there, are where the strides are shared across different problems, then you don't have to pass separate strides for all the end problems. Or sometimes even the layouts, you know, the, not the layouts, sorry, the the sizes. Um, so, so those are all variations possible. So I try to show you the most general way to do it. Uh, so that's an extreme form, right? Um, okay, do that. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, a quick question on the, So I think you showed the example where for multiple gems, the M and K were identical, right? So I'm assuming that translates well to a batched gem as well. So how does the scheduling here work? Let's say if M and K were different for f the four different gems. So we didn't do that experiment, but I think, if example, um, the layouts, the layouts are. Uh, so I think layout could impact. For example, if layouts are drastically different, then you could see performance variations. Right? Uh, but I'm assuming that at least if you're going to use TensorCore, then it's compatible with TensorCore layout. OK. Sizes ahead of time, like we right. we potentially could 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 know all the sizes and maybe do something static ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, like, how much better do you think you could do if you had like a static planning phase where you knew all the sizes that you needed? So I think if you had the static planning phase, like static compile time, then you could definitely uh, do better because the scheduler, the static scheduler, runs when you run the kernel, right? In, in Triton, right? So essentially, that's some small amount of Python code running. So you could eliminate that, right? For sure. And then, and if you have also have sharing, for example, we've seen some examples in some workload like Hugging Face. Uh, I don't even remember the name of some of the inference case where you can fuse about 24 gems uh, uh, together into a single gem, but 
uh, that puts a different kind of memory pressure on, on the system. So you have to be careful that if you're using too much memory collectively, so you need to not group too much, right? Uh, uh, and you could also, so there are some very nice examples in simulation uh, um, where, where people are simulating joints and robot thing, where they do very small, large number of gems. That's where this pays off. All right. Um, Anything online? Uh, any questions online? OK, uh, thanks, Vinod. Thank you. Yeah, so with that, uh, we come to the conclusion of the talks. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And special thanks to the speakers for uh, sharing their work. Please continue contributing through GitHub uh, by attending our Triton community calls that are monthly.